Welcome to Aimpoint Hunts the Globe 4. My name is Rob Fickling and I'm the presenter of the Australian hunting television series Beyond the Divide. Once again I'll be the host on this trip where I join the team from Aimpoint Sweden made up of former world's strongest man Magnus Samuelsson, his brother Torbjorn Samuelsson and Aimpoint's marketing director Eric Jepsen. This time we're across the Tasman in one of my favourite hunting playgrounds, New Zealand, and over the coming episodes we'll be taking on an epic hunt for multiple species covering big game, small game and waterfowl across both the North and South Islands. Helping us out will be guides Dave Ryan and Roger James, and our first episode gets underway down south with inside of Mount Cook at the historic Glen Tanner Station. So for this episode of Aimpoint Hunts the Globe 4, we are here in New Zealand and we're going to be using different gear. For Aimpoint, we're going to be using the Aimpoint Acro, which is our latest development of sight. Acro came out of a commercial aspect for pistols, but we also utilize it for hunting purposes because it's the smallest sight that is fully concealed in its package. The weight of the sight is very little, it's 60 grams. That means that for a hunt like this, when you do a lot of stalking, you carry less weight with you, and that is very important. It's fully waterproof, down to five meters. The sight itself has push buttons to turn the, the brightness up or down, depending on the ambient light. In situation here in New Zealand, we also know that the distance can be a little bit further than a normal aim point normally use. So we also have our new 3XC, which is a combination together with the sight. You can take the three times magnifier off the side, carry it in a pouch. You have a very light weapon with you up on your stalk. Once needed, you can take it out of a pouch, very easily adopt it behind the side, and now you have three times magnification. You can take that little bit further shot together with the input. You can flip it out, non-magnified, flip it in. Now you have magnification on the system. During this hunt, we will also be using different rifles. We have the Sako rifle, the Tika rifles. We have the Benelli and Beretta shotguns here with us. They are all going to be equipped with different aimpoint sites, especially aimpoint acro, but also our S1 site, which is our shotgun site. During this hunt, we will be using air, which is hearing protection. These you always carry and always have on because hearing is very important to protect. You don't want to lose it. Even if we're using the ATEX suppressors, we still use hearing protection. Clothing-wise, we're gonna be having the 511 clothing. We have the different clothing from the base layer to the top layer, all uh, fully waterproof, of course. We also have different pouches that we carry with us to carry less weight. Big pouch where you can have water, you can have your extra spare magazines, also a big medic kit if something should happen. So now we set up all the weapons together with the sights and the silencers bipods, everything else. Now the most important thing of this journey comes. We have to hit out to the range and make sure that we have a good searing on all the rifles and also that we have a good ballistic so we know the distance, what we can shoot at very accurately. Earlier that day we laid out all the gear consisting of Sarko and Ticker rifles in 223, 300 Win Mag and 7mm Rem Mag plus Beretta and Benelli shotguns in 12 gauge. In order to install the Aimpoint Acro, we first installed the Sarko OptiLock mount, and for the Aimpoint 3XC magnifier and twist mount solution, this would be installed using a loopholed QR mount. With each rifle now set up, it was out to the range on Glentana, and we started the process of zeroing the sights using Sarko Powerhead ammo. After first bore sighting the rifles, finer adjustments were made using the Acro's simple windage and elevation screws, which give reliable solid clicks that can be easily felt and heard. In only a few shots, the guys had everything grouping tightly and the rifles were now ready for the field. But before we got going on the first hunt, there was an important event we were all looking forward to attending, as today was the 24th of April and tomorrow it would be Anzac Day. Australia and New Zealand share a proud history of military service dating back to World War I and the date of the first landing of the Anzacs at Gallipoli. 
ANZAC stands for the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, and since 1920, ANZAC Day has been recognised in both Australia and New Zealand as a National Day of Remembrance, to honour the contribution and suffering of all who served and died in all wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations. For the Aimpoint team, it was a privilege for Eric, Magnus and Torbjorn to attend the dawn service and march that was held at the nearby town of Twizel and experience the emotions of such an important day for the locals. day we were ready to get into it and another early start had us into the hangar and away at dawn and this time I joined Magnus and Dave as we left our base camp at Glen Tanner, loaded into the chopper and headed over to the west coast to hunt chamois with pilot and hunting guide Mark Pridham. So like today Mark you'd, uh, you'd think we we're uh, going a scenic flight not going for a hunt it's an absolute ripper. Yeah mate but we'll be heading over to the west coast there and uh, hunting the tops today. We're just flying north, looking straight up here at Mount Cook. Eastern face here's got the sun shining on it. It looks magnificent, mate. It looks pretty easy, the old uh, Iraqi from the air, doesn't it? Oh, doesn't it? But uh, as we get closer, we see the main divide here, which yeah. separates us from the east. As we get a bit closer, she gets pretty gnarly. You've been doing some research as well, I believe, with some collaring, is that right? This whole area here is the Mount Cook uh, National Park, Iraqi, and uh, the project going on to terminate any uh, predators within the park, so uh, part of the data collecting we're doing is catching uh, hares uh, yeah. with the old net gun and putting tracking collars on them. <laughs> That's and, pretty uh, cool. Yeah, it gives Doc the opportunity to uh, uh, have a look at where they range to because they've got no idea how far a hare will go, eh? Oh, I reckon. I reckon a chamois would be pretty hard to catch, let alone a hare. That would be next level, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, they're pretty dirty little buggers. Well, nice hop over, mate. I'm looking forward to seeing some of those nice tussock bases shortly. Moving across the tussock didn't take long for the sun to get high and the chill to break from the freezing alpine air. We kept moving slowly through the basins, glassing ahead, as well as reaching out further with the spotter to see if we could locate a buck. Over on a distant ridge I caught movement and spotted a nice animal about to bed up. It's good to be back hunting with you buddy. Things were a bit flatter and drier and dustier when we were last hunting together. Eh? From one extreme to another. It sure is, it sure is. Well, welcome to chamois country. We've had a bit of bad weather and we've got a very narrow time frame. These chamois, they're tough little critters. We've just given Magnus an awesome example of how elusive they are, that buck. Got some good footage of him there just as he bedded up with the spotter. He's, he's in no man's land really as far as we're concerned. Can't get to him, he's across some ridges. You know, where he's bedded down, no one's gonna find him, no one's gonna get to him. So that's what we're looking for, <laughs> a beautiful solid bodied black stockier animal in the buck shape and some nice hooky horns around the top. Yeah, New Zealand, hey? You can see why it gets under the skin of mountain hunters. Also the challenge, if you stay on one spot, they just might pop up, I don't know, 200 metres in front of you all yeah. of a sudden. If yeah. you walk away, you can blow the cover. And then these things are so switched on, they raise a sharp eyesight and so agile as well. Yeah, they, they sometimes let you approach as well with their little, little ears and eyes and give you a whistle whist, before they bail off. So. Anyway, Dave's just gone ahead of us here, so we'll catch up with him soon and uh, see if we can find another one like that, but not as far away. With another animal spotted soon after, the ground in front of us looked really promising, so we carefully worked the edges of the mountain looking ahead. The day was now really warming up, but chamois can often keep moving throughout the day, getting up to feed in between their bedding breaks and off a steep shoulder looking down into a nice little feeder gut, the guys spotted a small group, so we stalked down to get into range. Fresh is off, Magnus, well done, mate. <laughs> Thanks, That's, mate. Uh, yeah. That's a good effort. Oh. You're a bit worried after the first shot, but your first shot was spot on. It's a new game for me. I've never seen this live before, and we walked quite a bit, yeah. and, yeah. and the sun is pretty much in our faces. So, uh, yeah, I'm really 
happy everything turned out the way it did, and I didn't want to leave the wounded animals. I was very curious. Yeah. That's we why I was fighting away. Even we joked the before, thing. how are you going up here? And yeah, I said, <laughs> Magnus is earning it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the, that's, the, that's the thing with hunting. It's supposed to be hunting, not collecting. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I, sure. I like to walk in spot, and I mean, you see these game way before I do. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. A special it's hard, yeah. There's, yeah. there's nothing easy about spotting chamois and flax like that. Often it's never a full animal out, it's always half an animal. And after the shot, two or three more broke out of that little crag. I had a shot at a buck, but I shanked it. But uh, yours is down, that's the most important thing. Three hours across the ditch, my home's <laughs> over there. I, I'll come back, I'll come back someone, some, another time for you. It's a long trip. Let's go down and check him out, mate. Yeah, awesome. Well, next time we, we meet up in Scandinavia. Yeah. <laughs> Stand by for more adventures in this series of Aimpoint Hunts the Globe 4. Coming up next, it's episode 2 and we're hunting tar on the South Island.